A strange video surfaced from YouTube shared by someone known as Big Deal. In the footage, he was out in the woods in Iowa when something unsettling unfolded. He stood at the ridgeline near a fence that separated his friend's yard from the woods beyond. The forest loomed thick and shadowy, a state park stretching endlessly behind the barrier. It was late, around 9, 48 p.m., and the silence of the night was broken by a distant scream. So I'm up at the ridgeline right now, about the, where the fence is at. And so behind this fence over here, there's a wood line. It's about 9.48 at the night. So we just heard it scream a little bit ago. I don't know if I can... I don't know if you can see past this, but so behind this where I'm pointing right now, there's the, there's a forest back there, and that's a pretty big forest. It's, it's a state park. So there's nothing that's back there that's protected, so I don't know. But we're back here, and it's, there's this fence right here that protects our, or the, my friend's yard, where we're at now. And from that, I don't know what you'd call this, but there's a pasture right here with a bunch of trees. You can't really see, I don't know if you can see that tree or not. Can you see that tree right there, that, that fern, right right there? That's a fern, and there's a bunch of other ferns all around. And it gets more dense as you go back. But what happens is this creature comes up against these this fence, and it jumps this fence. <laughs> And it was standing, we think, right in this where I'm standing right now. And my friend's inside right now. But I'm getting this footage. And... Did you just fucking hear that? That was fucking it. Oh. Fuck this, I'm out. Fuck this. He cursed, struggling to get the camera to focus. The fear clear in his voice as the scene seemed to spiral out of control. Whatever it was, it had made itself known. And it was standing, we think, right in this where I'm standing right now. And my friend's inside right now. But I'm getting this footage. And... Did you just fucking hear that? That was fucking it. Oh. Fuck this, I'm out. Fuck this. Disturbing footage shows Jeannie Wiley stepping outside for the first time after being trapped in a dark, suffocating room for over a decade. Jeannie was the victim of unimaginable abuse, isolation, and neglect. Her nightmare began when she was just 20 months old. Her father, Clark Wiley, transformed their home into a prison, locking Jeannie away in a small, dark room. Most days, she was strapped to a child's toilet or bound in a crib her arms and legs immobilized. He forbade anyone from speaking to her or offering her the slightest comfort. There was no light, no warmth, and no love. Her body and mind were left to wither, deprived of human connection, severely malnourished, and starved of the basic elements of life. Clark's descent into cruelty came after his mother was killed by a drunk driver in a hit-and-run accident, an event that twisted his psyche beyond repair. From that moment, the family house became a fortress of secrets, Curtains drawn, doors bolted, darkness everywhere. It was a place where unspeakable things happened, hidden from the world. Inside that same house lived Irene Wiley, Jenny's mother, a woman haunted by fear and suffering from cataracts so severe she could hardly see. Clark controlled her completely, her own will crushed beneath his brutality. The couple had four children, but only two survived, and barely at that. The first two were lost in the most heartbreaking ways, one abandoned to die in a cold garage, the other claimed by birth complications. By the time authorities finally discovered Jeannie, she was 13 years old, a ghost of a child who had never truly lived. When Clark was finally arrested, the case made headlines, and the world was horrified. But before he could face justice, Clark ended his life at 70, leaving a chilling note. The world will never understand. At 18, Jeannie returned to the very house that had been her prison this time with her mother stepping back into the place where horrors began. The echoes of that dark room lingered, a haunting reminder of a stolen childhood that no amount of time could ever return. They were singing in a church choir during Good Friday Mass when something chilling happened. Hidden Underbelly uploaded the unsettling footage showing a seemingly ordinary Mass, but it was anything but. In the background, a 300-year-old statue of Jesus can be seen, an ancient relic that had been revered for centuries. But then, something unexplainable occurs. The 
statue's head begins to move. Witnesses in the church were struck with awe, many calling it a miracle, while others weren't so sure. In the comments section, viewers voiced a darker possibility that the statue was no longer a symbol of worship, but rather a vessel for something far more sinister. The footage recorded by a churchgoer seven years prior to the video's release continues to leave people questioning, was this a holy sign or something evil hiding behind the revered figure of Christ? A man finds himself transported back in time, claiming to be in the year 1998, and records his experience at a classic Pizza Hut. As he walks through the restaurant, he marvels at the familiar yet nostalgic surroundings. The salad bar, untouched by modern trends, evokes memories from over two decades ago. He points out the signature lamps, the old-school dining booths, and the unmistakable charm of the retro decor. Excuse me, sir. Hey, do you know what year it is today? Uh, 1998? Why? Guys, I'm in 1998. As you can tell behind me, I'm at Pizza Hut in 1998. I'm gonna show you what Pizza Hut looks like. This is gonna blow your freaking mind. Let me show you something. Guys, how do you deny this? I'm literally here, guys. I mean, the salad bar at Pizza Hut. You haven't seen this since, like, 2000. Guys, look at these lamps. I mean, I'm literally here, guys. Check it out. Oh my god, look at the old dining experience. Let me show you something that's gonna really, really blow your mind. Check this out. You haven't seen this in a long time. Guys, we even have an old school arcade. Well, it's not old school right now. It's old school to me. One of them's from 96 and the other one's from 94. Let me go ask someone what year it is. One second, watch. He is especially fascinated by the arcade machines one from 1996, the other from 1994, adding to the atmosphere of a bygone time. He seems eager to convince his audience, repeatedly emphasizing how undeniable the experience is. Finally, in his excitement, he approaches someone to confirm what year it is, hoping to validate the surreal moment he's living. Excuse me, sir. Hey, do you know what year it is today? Uh, 1998? Why? On June 4th, 2024, something unsettling was captured on video inside a public restroom. The footage, taken by a man known as Axelosa, reveals his deep unease, evident in his trembling voice as he navigates an eerie situation. He claims to be alone in the restroom, yet moments earlier he distinctly heard noises coming from one of the stalls. Strangely, each stall appears empty, hoping to document whatever is happening. Axelosa begins recording, capturing something beyond explanation. No, I don't que ver. Estoy ahorita en el baño de la universidad. Lo que pedo ahorita es que estoy, bueno, acabo de terminar de hacer el baño y pues estaba todo normal. Pero ahorita están ruidos raros y se está tocando la puerta. Pero quiero que vean que pues no hay nada. Vean, ahí está mi reflejo. Me reflejo, pero vean de este lado, pues aquí no hay nada, ve. Acá tampoco, vean. Aquí tampoco hay nada. Aquí pues tampoco, vean. Y acá el lugar es bastante pequeño y está mi reflejo. Pero a ver, hoy. Escuchar. Amid the unsettling quiet, muffled voices and odd phrases seem to echo from nowhere, followed by the chilling phrase, little boys mustn't please tell me to. Then, out of nowhere, a face appears behind one of the stall doors. The stall, which had been empty, suddenly reveals a pale face with wide, staring eyes. 
The image lingers just long enough to send chills down your spine before disappearing without a trace. Axolosa didn't even notice it at first, only realizing the terror he had captured when reviewing the footage later. Viewers much like Axel were left disturbed by what they witnessed. Though Axolosa has yet to provide updates or further context on this eerie encounter, the video alone is enough to leave anyone haunted by what lurks behind that stall door. Fifteen-year-old Rebecca Riesch's disappearance remains one of the most disturbing and mysterious cases in Berlin. Born on September 21, 2003, Rebecca was known for her vibrant personality and her love for sleepovers, BTs, and playing Sims. On February 17, 2019, she was eager to have a sisterly sleepover at her sister Jessica's house, as Jessica's husband, Florian, would be away at a work party. Though it was a school night, Rebecca's mother, Bridget, reluctantly agreed to the sleepover after Rebecca promised to wake up early for school. That evening, Rebecca and Jessica enjoyed a fun night together before Rebecca went to sleep on the living room couch around 11 p.m. The next morning, Florian returned home at 5.45 a.m. and claimed he went straight to bed. Jessica left for work at 7 a.m. Without checking on Rebecca around this time, Brigitte tried calling Rebecca to ensure she was awake for school, but Rebecca didn't answer. Concerned, Brigitte called Florian to wake her daughter, but Florian abruptly hung up. Shortly after, Florian called back to say Rebecca was no longer on the couch. Assuming Rebecca had left for school, Brigitte decided to drive to Florian's house to check on her daughter. Before she arrived, Florian called again, telling her not to come, as Rebecca wasn't there. As the day went on, Brigitte grew increasingly worried when Rebecca failed to answer her phone. Jessica later called Brigitte asking about Rebecca's whereabouts and whether she had come to pick up her belongings. This raised alarm bells as Rebecca would never leave for school without her backpack or school books. When the school confirmed Rebecca never arrived, her family reported her missing. Police began investigating and soon zeroed in on Florian as a suspect. They were suspicious of his conflicting statements and unusual car trips on the day Rebecca vanished. When they searched his car, they found hair they believed belonged to Rebecca and fibers from a blanket she had used. Florian claimed the trips were related to illegal activities but insisted they had nothing to do with Rebecca's disappearance. Despite the mounting evidence against him, Rebecca's family defended Florian, insisting he wasn't capable of harming Rebecca. The case remained a mystery, with police believing Rebecca did not leave the house alive and that Florian was responsible. The search for Rebecca continued, but as time passed, the case grew colder, leaving Berlin with unanswered questions and a family desperate for closure. The disappearance of Rebecca Ryush has left a dark shadow over the community, and the truth about what happened that fateful morning remains elusive, haunting those who knew and loved her.